Great job, Brian. Thank you very much. And I have to say that uh, Ultimate or Brian and Jeremiah uh, are um, helping us define the theme. So um, that was a great talk. I, I just realized by Alexa Tsotsis in the corridor telling me about the, um, the news that uh, Kevin Sistrom made yesterday by explaining how he pulled the Instagram pictures of Twitter. So the Twitter versus Facebook wars. It's in the New York Times and USA Today and CNN. It's crazy. And TechCrunch, I was about to say. <laughs> um, it's uh, pretty impressive. So, <laughs> um, Alex Atsotsis, who is the editor of TechCrunch, and uh, Tom Katis of Voxer, who connects people in a very uh, incredible way with his app, are going to join me now on stage. Hey, thank you. Welcome, Alexia. Looking great. Hey, Hi, Tom. Thank you. Good to see you. Hey, everybody. All right. All right. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about your background? Everyone who I talk to about you says you're, he's a real guy, he's real <laughs> legit, um, and that you apparently have a very high alcohol tolerance. <laughs> I'm not um, sure if that's what I want to be known for. <laughs> I mean, it, it helps in the valley. <laughs> um, but tell me a little bit about where you come from and, and how you got to, to Voxer, or to Triple Canopy, and then we'll talk about Voxer. Um, yeah, I have a little bit of an unusual background in, in, in that I sort of went back and forth between the military and Silicon Valley. Um, so the, after high school, I went into the Army. I had this crazy idea that I wanted to be a Green Beret, and went off and did that for a few years. And, and then after college, ended up out in, in, uh, in the Bay Area for the dot-com boom and, and bust. And, uh, and then after 9-11, um, uh, re-enlisted, got back in the Army, uh, went to Afghanistan in 02 and 03. And, um, and uh, it was in Afghanistan that, I mean, obviously, I, I didn't go to Afghanistan looking for business ideas, but, uh, you know, I, I, I came back with, with... Where did you uh, go to college and what did you study? So uh, wait, you, you enlisted in the Army, you came back, you went to I, college. Where yep. did you... I went to Yale. You went to Yale. What did you study? Uh, uh, EP&E, Ethics, Politics, and Economics. And then after that, you decided to go back into the Army. Well, first, the Silicon Valley for the dot-com boom. And uh, I, w I had no plans to go back into the Army until you know, September 11th, 2001. And uh, so I enlisted right after that. And, and, uh, uh, and then you know, got back on an, on an SF team and, and went to Afghanistan. And it was there that... Um, well, the idea for Triple Canopy definitely originated there. And, and the idea for Voxer didn't originate there, but the inspiration for it, sort of the... Uh, Voxer was inspired by a frustration with military communication. Uh, military radios work in a very specific way. They pretty much always work the same way since there have been push-to-talk radios. And, uh, you know, in the 10 years or so since the first time I was in the Army and the second time, radios had gotten a lot better. They'd gotten smaller and lighter and the batteries lasted longer. But other than that, they hadn't changed at all. The way they worked was identical. And, um, and when everything is, you know, when, when you get busy in, in the military, when, 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 when people are shooting at you, when, when you're under duress, um, there's a lot to do. And there are a lot of different people you need to talk to. You might have your team frequency, you might have to call for close air support, medevac, talk to a commander on a different uh, frequency, call for quick reaction force. And you end up needing to be on all these different channels at the same time, and you, and you can't. And even if you had five or six or seven different radios, if everybody's talking to you at the same time, you can't take it all in. And so I struggled with that. You know, I, I felt like you know, I had done everything right, and all my radios worked exactly as they were supposed to, and yet it was really hard, and it was, it was suboptimal for sure from sort of a process and communication standpoint. And so I, I stood on that for years um, while I was building Triple Canopy, and it was, it was years later. Okay, so Triple Canopy is mm -hmm. a security company. It's your first company. Yes, first uh, one that I started, yeah. It protects diplomats, and it uh, teaches counterterrorism to, well, to militaries. 
Well, we, our primary uh, service is uh, security itself and then sort of the related services around it, um, sort of high threat uh, security. We, we protect the uh, U.S. ambassador in Baghdad. Uh, we do a lot of work across Afghanistan uh, for, for the U.S. government. And we, uh, we also do some work for NGOs. We do some work for oil field services firms. And you're bringing um, in more than $600 million in revenue uh, a, a year? It's not a, it's not a small company anymore. Uh, okay, so why go from that to a walkie-talkie app? Um, it's, well, we call it a walkie-talkie just because everybody knows what a walkie-talkie is. It's uh, almost every language people know that. Here in France, they call it something else. Do you know what they call it in France? No. A talkie-walkie. Talkie-walkie, <laughs> of course. Um, but, uh, so we call it that, but as soon as people start using it, they figure out that it's it's something more than that. It doesn't work like a normal walkie-talkie. Um, you know, when people use you know Nextel or any type of real walkie-talkie, um, everybody likes pressing the button and talking to the other side. But uh, most people don't want to be interrupted. And people who actually carry around real walkie-talkies, they have to be willing to be interrupted all the time. Do you have your phone on you? You want to show how it works? Uh, well, I have it, but <laughs> it's, I'd rather not do a demo. Um, the 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 core of it is. Live systems, systems that are live only, require interruption. Um, and if you, if you, the only people who are willing to walk around with a, with a walkie-talkie are people who don't mind being interrupted all the time. You know, people working on construction crews or cops or you know military and whatnot. Um, and so that's always kept that as a niche market. And what Voxer has done is, is, is to change that. We've unlocked that requirement of liveness. So Voxer is a live system. When you key the mic and you start speaking, it's not just recording a file that it's going to send when you're done. It's streaming the bits live, but it's with reliable delivery. It's an actual message. And so if I start talking to you, you, you get the push notification, but it doesn't just blare out. It doesn't interrupt you. Um, you can choose to ignore it and listen to it later, or you can swipe and come in and s start playing at the beginning and listen while I'm speaking, and it actually catches you up uh, while I'm still speaking. And then when, you, when I'm done speaking, you just key the mic and talk back. So uh, you came up with the idea while you were in Afghanistan. You thought this would uh, uh, ease communication. Uh, you were working on it for five years. Yeah, um, it turns out it was really hard to build. Um, it was, it, it's, when, you, when you, you know, go into a space where there's, you know, there's this giant uh, you know, body of, of, uh, of art of sort of prior technologies that have had to do with live systems like telephony, um, and you know, for 130 years of you know, telephony since, since the telephone was invented, and then there's, I don't even know how long, of messaging systems. Uh, uh, and there have been all these technologies that have been built up on both sides to support these two very different, diametrically opposed types of systems. I mean, the protocols they use, the ways that they send data are totally different. When you're talking on the phone and, and you lose bits, it doesn't slow down or try to fix it. You know, it just blasts forward. And if you can't understand what the person's saying, they repeat it. Um, whereas email works in the opposite way. Um, where you can have a terrible connection and just keep retransmitting and working and trickling its, its way until it's in your inbox with a 100% exact replica of what was sent. And, uh, you know, with Voxer, we tried to build a system that was both at the same time, that took the best attributes of each system. And it turns out that was really, really hard. It ended up being easy to patent. Uh, we have over 75 patents now, and it's because no one was crazy enough to try to do something like this before. But it took us years. It took us over four years of working on it to launch. And, and then uh, when you launched, it went viral. It was the hottest thing around last year. Um, you raised 30 million from Intel, IVP. You put 20 million of your own money this is uh, from, from Triple Canopy, I'm guessing. Uh, hottest thing out there in the top uh, apps on both iOS and Android. Raining downloads, 2.5 mil million daily active users is what we published. Uh, yeah, I, I never tens of millions of monthly <laughs> active users. You were the, the hottest girl in the room last year. Uh, this year, it's uh, WhatsApp and Snapchat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I. You know, what do you think about about you know being a part of the Silicon Valley hype, having that hype die down, and watching you know these new players in the messaging space sort of? So um, I never wanted to be part of the Silicon Valley hype. Um, I wanted to build a real business, and um, the you know <coughs> the 
hype was not what caused us to go viral. <clears throat> Excuse me, the hype came after we went viral and, uh, and after things stabilized, and we're still growing like crazy. Uh, we still have a huge number of users, and, uh, and we're growing on, on all the right uh, metrics, not only top line, but our daily engagement, et cetera. We're very happy with um, the... Is it still the same 2.5 million or tens never, of millions I never monthly? announced 2.5. All, all we say is we have millions of daily uniques, uh, and we have tens of millions of total users. Okay, but um, Snapchat, I mean, you're not in the top 50 in iOS or, or the Android store anymore. In terms of overall, I mean, it's mostly yeah. games. In the, in but other Snapchat and what, WhatsApp are, are number two in both free and paid. We might so as well be talking about games, though, because they're, they're not what we do. Um, uh, Snapchat is very interesting. Uh, I don't want to be in the sexting business. Uh, that's, that's, I'll leave that to them. They can own that. Um, the, uh, WhatsApp is a tremendous company. They've done a fantastic job. Total hats off to them. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job of, of, of sort of uh, killing SMS. Uh, they still have a long ways to go, um, but they are, you know, they are the you know, prototypical SMS replacement app. And, uh, and that is fantastic. Um, but uh, that's not what we've ever aspired to be. Um, uh, when you, when you want to build something new, when you want to invent a new technology to solve an actual human need, um, uh, you have to make decisions about, uh, am I going to be sort of interoperable? Am I going to be an equivalent? Am I going to be something that people you know, don't need to think? You know, uh, you know, something like WhatsApp is great because people don't need to learn how to use it. It, it works like text messaging. People so do you, do you think text messaging is the future of, of this kind of mobile communication, or do you think the voice text hybrid that, that you guys are doing what I, what will I've sustain? What I've always said is I've, I think text is great. Uh, the move over time has been from phone calls towards text. Uh, but I don't think we're all going to become deaf mutes. Um, I think text has its place, uh, but people like to talk. And the, so then you have to ask the question of why is it that voice has been decreasing in its, in its usage? And first of all, it's, it's still a huge market. Uh, but secondly, um, the thing that really drives people towards using text is etiquette. Uh, it's because when you make a phone call, you ha you're choosing to interrupt someone. And when you choose to interrupt someone, that that's imposes a certain uh, uh, anxiety in people. Not only the person who's receiving the call and being interrupted, but you know, generally people think twice before they call someone. It's, you know, it, it, that social anxiety about that interruption. So any system, uh, you know, and this sort of goes back to sort of my frustrations with military communication. Any system that's live only imposes certain requirements. Um, you must interrupt people. Uh, you must be willing to wait. Um, and and, you, and the, all the prioritization is done by the, the person you know, on the outbound. Uh, if, if different people are, are calling you, like you can't, I can't choose when you're going to choose, when you're going to decide to call me, or in the military, I can't decide who it is. You know, if people are talking to me on the radio, I have to listen right then and I have to respond right then, even if it's not important, even if something else I'm doing is more important, um, I can't choose, and yet every, you know, teenager can have five or six chat windows open and prioritize and be focused in the chat that's most important to them, and they can see the stuff flashing in the other chats, and they can sort of every once in a while come over, catch up, and then come back to what's important to them. We wanted that for voice. We wanted that for live media. And it turns out that was really hard uh, because it's like, wait a minute, this is not like voice over IP and live streaming. This is not storm forward, you know, TCP, you know, base system. This is something, it's a hybrid in between. We want something that I don't want to ever have to wait, but I don't want to interrupt. Uh, so that's hard. You know, it's, it's, um, it's funny if, if you look at, you know, we, we analyze all of the, the, the messages in our system and we look at sort of the behavior and we, we, we ask ourselves the question, are people actually using it like this? How are they actually using Voxer? And, um, you know, so we dumped every message for a month into you know, our Hadoop cluster and we looked at response time. So from if one person, you know, person A is speaking to person B, how long until person B keys the mic to respond back? That was the question we wanted to know. So if people are talking for 10, 15, 20 seconds, not when does the recipient receive it, not when do they start listening to it, when have they finished listening to it and then key the mic and talk back. And our peak response time is between two and four seconds. 
and more than 50% of our messages are responded to um, within 13 seconds. So our system is used in a very live way. So you're saying you're seeing you're seeing sustainable engagement. Your your growth yes. is is still good. Yes. Uh, has Facebook tried to buy you like they tried to buy WhatsApp? Um, uh, and I don't comment on on those types of things. Um, so so yes. <laughs> um, yes, but you can't say. It, what, I, what I'd say is, you know, in general, uh, one of the things that's, that I love about building a business that's doing something interesting and that's a great technology is I get to meet all kinds of really cool people. Like Mark Zuckerberg. And, and uh, it, the, the conversations that you have with these people are great and they're interesting and they're exciting. Um, I think uh, Facebook's recent announcement about enabling people to sign into Messenger without a Facebook account is great. Um, and uh, I think it's going to make it things more interesting between them and WhatsApp. Um, Do you think uh, it'll kill WhatsApp? No, I don't. I think WhatsApp is doing a very good job. But I, but I, think, I think, you know, Facebook Messenger is going to do great. Uh, I think there's room for more than one. Um, How much did it, Facebook offer you? <laughs> Okay. You're tenacious. I'm trying. This, oh, yeah. you know, I'll never be Arrington. Oh. <laughs> um, anyways, your use case. Mm -hmm. Last year, it was primarily teenagers, right? No, no. it was teenagers are in Cleveland. Know, teenagers. The the uh, if you look at the demographic of Twitter and the people who post on Twitter, the you know pictures of themselves and, and videos and whatnot, uh, those are primarily teenagers. And so uh, the, the demographic of people who use Twitter ends up appearing as if it's the demographic of people who, who are using everything else. But it's really more representative of Twitter uh, than it is of us. We have very, very broad utilization. And actually, a, a, a very large percentage of our users right now are businesses. Um, and one of the things that became clear to us a long time ago, actually, the original idea for Voxer was not to launch a free consumer app. Uh, the original idea was to build an enterprise business. And uh, you know, when we took off and went viral uh, with our consumer app, uh, we knew we were going to have to really focus on launching the enterprise product because it, it didn't take very long for businesses to come to us and tell us they wanted the paid version. They wanted the enterprise version. And the analogy is, um, you know, uh, is email. Uh, there's, there are no real differences in features between Gmail, free Gmail, and enterprise email. You can, you know, they work basically the same way, except for the IT manager. Uh, and you go to any, you know, uh, you know, any business uh, that's of any size in the world, and they're not going to say, "Oh, just get a Hotmail account or a Gmail account and use that." They're going to give you a work email address and have you use work email. And it's for very specific reasons. Um, they want to be able to grant and revoke access privileges. They want to be able to um, you know, have a record of things for compliance. Uh, um, they want, you know, to, you know there, there are certain very specific things that they need as organizations um, that, uh, that we can provide. You know, so there's this direct analogy between Voxer and email in terms of the reasons why businesses have been coming to us. Um, wanting uh, the the paid version, so we actually, if there are any businesses here, uh, we we just launched it. We have a closed beta going right now, and uh, if you want to sign up for it, uh, it's uh, you know there's a little bit of a we, we t there's a little bit of a waiting list, but uh, business.voxer.com, uh, you can sign up for our waiting list, and uh, we're very excited about that. So your I your ideal use case is enterprise. You see Voxer mm -hmm. as something that employees at Target can go around and, and talk to each other on, or, or security companies, or, or the military. You, see, you actually see it as a paid product. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, we just look at Nextel. Uh, you know, when Nextel was acquired by um, Sprint, uh, they had about 20 million subscribers, um, and they were doing about 13 billion in revenue. And they had a product where users had to buy specialized hardware, they had to run in a specialized network, and they had to be willing to be interrupted. We don't have any of those requirements. And those are each really big requirements. Um, we have a, a far superior product. It's, this is the next generation of high performance communication. Um, this, is not a, this is not a free or cheap version of Nextel. This is something that's better. Um, and uh, businesses are lining up to sign up for the, the enterprise version of it. Um, one last question. Uh, I actually want to know what the craziest thing you've ever seen in, in combat is. <laughs> but uh, 
That, so that question. And then <laughs> what's your most valuable lesson learned in combat that you think also applies to entrepreneurship? Um, well, the, uh, well, first, in terms of the craziest things in combat, generally are, there's a lot of funny uh, things that happen that uh, are not really combat related. You just happen to be in a combat zone. Uh, when things are actually scary, uh, you don't think of them as crazy. You think of them as scary. Uh, but uh, in terms of... Uh, being in combat, I'd say uh, it is kind of like being an entrepreneur uh, because there's n nobody really tells you, uh, you know, this is, you're doing well or you're doing badly, this is what you should do or shouldn't do. There's not like just a path you're supposed to follow. It's all about problem solving. Uh, and they're really hard problems. And many of the problems that you face in combat are problems that you can never solve. I mean, that's why there's a war going on. Uh, and you're trying to figure out how can you actually make a positive difference? What are the things that you can do? Where should you be focusing your efforts? Uh, and I think that that's very similar to what it's like uh, being an entrepreneur trying to build the business. So what's the scariest thing you've ever seen? Not crazy, it's scariest? Uh, I don't know. It's anytime people are trying to kill you, it's kind of scary. Uh, and actually, probably the scariest thing is is after the first time or second time or third time that people try to kill you, it's, 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 it's you know, going out again. It's, it's the every day going back out, exposing yourself to, to risk again. Just the thought of, yes, I'm going to keep doing this. Uh, and when, when you're actually in the middle of it, it's, you're scared, but there's not a lot of time to sort of contemplate it. Have you heard the saying, uh, they try to kill us, we survive, let's eat? Excuse me? They tried to kill us. We survived. Let's eat. <laughs> great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Tom. I really Thank appreciated you. this interview. This is great. Thanks. Thanks.